extension and the teaching experience in mid science and technology he has worked nine extramural projects sponsored by moispi mofti dbt dah apedam fss ai and icr and to Twenty-two institute projects. He is instrumental in establishing experimental abattoir, poultry processing unit, mobile exhibition unit, agri business incubation center, nutrient and chemical residues lab at Anasimi, Hyderabad. He played a key role in getting GS status to Hyderabad Halim. He has seventy research articles to his credit and authored five books and prepared twelve videos. He was member of advisory committee of eleven postgraduate students of livestock production technology. He is recipient of a fellow, honor of Indian Meat Science Association, and member of Nation Academy of Veterinary Sciences. He is also serving as secretary of Indian Meat Science Association and worked as associate editor of Journal of Meat Science. His area of research interests are wholesome and meat production, chemical residues in meat, meat processing, and value addition. Okay, you can start, Mr. Kumar. Dr. Mr. So, Kumar. Very good morning to all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reddy Garu, for your kind words. So, I take this opportunity to thank Director, uh, Directorate of Food Research, Dr. Satyajit Sir, and the organizer of this webinar events, uh, Dr. Reddy Garu, and also my director, uh, Dr. Balvude Sir, for permitting me. So, and uh, thank you very much, everyone. And I also welcome all the participants to this uh, webinar presentation. So shall I share it, sir? Ah, you can uh, share. So is it visible, sir? Yeah, yeah, it is audible. So I'll go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, sir. You can go ahead. So dear participants, all we know that uh, after post-independence over the years, uh, we have uh, moved from a situation of begging bubble for a food commodities to a food surplus. So most of the... My screen is visible, sir? Yeah, it's visible. It's visible. It is visible only. Pardon, sir? Screen is visible. Okay, okay. So uh, most of the food grains now we are self sufficient even we are able to export some of the uh, food commodities to various countries. So thanks to the green revolution. So everybody talked about the green revolution. Then people also talk about the white revolution. So currently our uh, we are able to put, uh, we are number one in the uh, milk production in the whole, kind, whole globe. And we are able to produce about 200 million metric tons of milk every year. And our per capita consumption also rose to about 400 gram, uh, even the uh, beyond the old average. So people talk about this old white revolution and the uh, green revolution, but uh, there is a silent revolution uh, happens in the poultry sector. I call it as a pink revolution in the broiler chicken, and also white and uh, yellow revolution in the egg sector. So the uh, broiler birds, which were introduced during 1980s, so which were weighing about 1.5 kilo and to attain that one, they have to grow for eight, eight weeks. So currently uh, our broilers are able to attain a poly weight of 1.5 kilo to 2 kilo. So within a, a, a span of 20, 35 to 40 days. So it's a great, great achievement and with an FCR of about 1.5 kg. So this is a great achievement. So and in addition to that one, currently the poultry meat constitutes about 50% of the total meat produced in this country. So this is a great achievement. Similarly, so we go to the poultry uh, layer sector. So this uh, this bird weighing about 1.5 1, 1. kilo, so able to produce about 15 to 20 kilo of eggs in an year. So this is a very great achievement. So this, uh, they, I will call them as a protein dispenser. So uh, take an egg every day, uh, keep away from all this illness. It's a, a famous bird. So on currently, uh, our consumption is more than 80 eggs per day, per year. So these are the great achievements. So we have to appreciate all the uh, stakeholders. Uh, of the slides are not moving. Muthurumar, your slides are not changing. Please, can you do that? 
Lights are not changing. Yeah, yeah. It is. Now it's coming, sir. Yeah, now it is fine. Uh, now it is coming. Yeah, yeah. Now it's visible, sir. Ah, it is coming now. Right. Okay. So when come to the economic contribution, the lifestyle sector contributes about more than twelve lakh crores. To the Indian GDP, so out of which, so more than one lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred twelve crores is contributed by the old limit sector, and also yeah, about thirty-nine thousand five hundred five crores of uh, rupees is contributed from the egg sector. So this is a great extra economic contribution from the poultry sector. So, but when looking to the uh, the meat consumption pattern in India, so more than seventy percent of the Indians are meat consumer. Even then. the per capita consumption remains around 6 kilo per annum so this is a very very meager level when compared to even under developed countries in various part of so uh, uh, out of each one you know, the poultry meat contributes about uh, around 50 percentage of the total uh, meat consumed in the country so uh, the but the requirements are very huge in the coming years so we have to gear up our poultry production to meet the requirement so even though we are self sufficient in most of most of the food grains and even animal products so because of the poverty uh, so a, a good number of proportion of the young children are undernourished at the same time so many of the uh, affluent people are suffering with the uh, lifestyle diseases like diabetes and cardio problem because of the overeating so the main reason behind that one is the lack of protein in their diet and they consume lot of carbs So this is the main reason. So, the, but they have to change it to the protein-rich diet, uh, mainly animal food product-based diet. So then they will be uh, overcome this uh, lifestyle-oriented diseases. So as per the FAO prediction, uh, the uh, India going to be the uh, uh, major consumer of the poultry meat in by the year 2030, and we have to uh, produce about 8.8 million metric ton of poultry meat. So currently we are able to produce about Uh, for more than 4 million metric ton of poultry meat so that has to be doubled to meet the requirement in the year 2020 2030 the poultry industry it is a, one of the role model for the whole livestock sector so it is totally uh, highly uh, integrated and organized uh, starting from the breeding farm till it's the, the grown in the farm so it's a mostly organized but once it is produced in the broiler farm and goes for the marketing so they are uh, they are little bit of unorganized but the things have changed in the last few years so now the uh, the integrators have come up with their own processing unit and also they have the retail shop to uh, market their product and even they are going for the online marketing so the even the last leg of the uh, poultry production now is getting organized so the in the coming years maybe within a few years the poultry sector will be totally organized starting from the uh, growing till the uh, reaching the customer So the all the uh, channels are completely organized. So that will be definitely a, uh, give a good future for the farmer as well as the producer and processor and even the consumer as well. So growing the awareness about the uh, safe meat consumption and also the nutrition rich consumption of food product consumption, even after the COVID. So they have got a good lesson that uh, what is the nutritional profile is how it is important to protect us from the infectious diseases that has got a good lesson for all of us at the same time how the food product should be handled in a safe and hygienic manner so this this awareness has created uh, in the minds of the consumer so and this is moving in a long way in the consumer mind and it's also reflecting in the uh, marketing of the poultry product so many of the uh, open uh, air the, uh, air sorted houses and retail shops they are not slowly changing towards the air well air conditioned closed door uh, retail shops so this is a very good change so uh, this uh, chilled meat concept is coming up very well through the uh, lot of the startups so the uh, as usual the, the how the integration has come up in the poultry sector the similar way they are also uh, move, uh, the poultry sector is uh, giving a, a, a model industry for the marketing of the uh, animal produce so the indian poultry industry marching ahead in providing not only the wholesome meat And also the tasty value-added meat products. So the complete integration has come up. The uh, the farm, 
the uh, integrators are now setting up their own processing unit, hygienically processing the bed, converting into a very value-added meat product, nicely packing and making a cold chain and they are distributing to the customers. So the uh, big giants like uh, Suguna, uh, Vinkies, uh, the Sneha, all those they are coming up with their own processing plan and also they are uh, reaching the customers. So the technological advancement, this is all because of the technological ad advancement which has made the not only the growing of the broilers and layers, but also the post-harvesting um, also aspect has also have a lot of, made a lot of impact on providing the wholesome meat to the consumers. So I will uh, classify this uh, technological advancement into a different category based upon the benefit derived from them. So these technologies, they are assuring the quality and safe meat product to the consumer. They are also conserving the quality of the meat product. So because the fresh meat, is, the quality is, has to be maintained. So for that one, we have to have certain uh, safety measures and management aspect. So that need to be preserved so that the quality of the meat will not be deteriorated. And also these technologies are uh, helping the processor to extend the shelf life of the meat product because of the high moisture content and very high nutritive value. These uh, animal products are very much prone for the perishability. So their shelf life is very less unless otherwise they are not properly handled and preserved. So these technologies are supporting uh, for the extension of the shelf life so that the shelf life of the meat can be extended to few days to few months. And also these uh, technologies, they are enhancing the qualitative food. So the Parsi, the meat itself is a very uh, tasty and sensorily well acceptable product. But addition of some of the ingredient and the processing that makes this meat uh, further more appealing to the consumers. And also it is uh, by processing them into very well aired product. So consumer has the convenience of eating them at their home without much preparation. And also it provides a lot of variety to them instead of taking the monotonous diet every day. So they can enjoy a different uh, dishes on uh, different occasions. This also reduced uh, so from the processor point of view, this technology helps in reducing the cost of production. So by replacing the uh, non-meat ingredient, because the value-added product, the major cost from is from the meat. So if, uh, they are using some meat alternative so that uh, the without affecting the sensory attributes of the value-added product, so they can en enhance the uh, uh, quality, they can maintain the quality attribute at the same time reduce the cost of the product. And also this technology is helping the processor to reduce the processing time and also increasing the volume of their product. So the, the thoroughput got increased because of the automation. So because of these technologies, there are several benefits to the producer as well as the processor and even the consumers. So we'll be uh, dealing uh, this technological advancement in two categories. That is first primary processing that involves slaughtering of the birds into a, a, a wheat, uh, fresh meat production. That is the primary production. So after that one, the fresh meat is converted into very value added product. So this will be the second part of my presentation. So one of the technological advancements is in the manufacturing of the processing equipment. So the lot of manufacturers, both the multi companies as well as the uh, domestic um, uh, manufacturers, they have come up with several uh, lines of equipment. So this will this is helping the processor uh, to uh, to have the uh, quick processing. At the same time, they want to maintain the quality of the meat without any losing the quality attributes. So in the Hyderabad itself, we have uh, the Dopeshwar and the Pune based R&D and even the Strom. So there are some of the few manufacturers, they are producing very good quality uh, machineries that will be supporting the processor to convert the boats into value-added meat product. So based upon the requirement of the processor, these uh, manufacturers have come up with a different scale of equipment. Maybe it's a, for a small scale processor who process about 200 birds in a day, they can go for a manual type of processing equipment. So that's, that has the uh, bleeding cone, uh, then the scalder, defeatherer, and the platform to dress the birds. And also they can go for the portioning machine to cut the birds into to a different cut of parts. So this is a basic model required for any meat processing. So if they, if they are the thorough put increased, so they, if they, somebody want to process the thousand birds per day or even 10,000 birds per even hours. So they have a different scale of machineries. So this is the second one, uh, what it is depicted is uh, the uh, yeah, yeah, container model. Huh? Within a small container, this can be fit in, in and that the operation can be done in a very hygienic. Uh, no? 
so and the third one was depicted is a very highly uh, complicated and uh, very sophisticated processing equipments the tin was a lot of machineries and the thoroughfares goes even 50000 birds per hour so over the years there were various uh, in the various part of the countries uh, several uh, poultry processing plants have been established currently we have more than 50 uh, integrated poultry processing unit with the capacity of more than 2000 birds even we have uh, the sneha uh, which is uh, in uh, near hyderabad so they process about 6000 birds per hour so there are the uh, list of various uh, processing uh, poultry processing uh, unit established in different parts of the country so this is a sneha processing plant and one more the, uh, the lifeline feeds uh, this is a bangalore chikmangalur based uh, integrated completely integrated uh, management system where the birds were grown in their farm and they got, they got processed in their own processing plant and they have the own retail shop to uh, distribute the uh, ch chicken uh, chilled and under chilled conditions so similarly at nrc meat we have established the facility for uh, uh, primary processing as well as seven secondary processing uh, unit so this is a iso 22000 certified uh, facility so we are using this one for uh, Uh, training our uh, entrepreneurs and also we are uh, utilizing this facility for test marketing of our entrepreneurs product so uh, this is a very sophisticated automation so the automation help to increase the throughput of the pro our productivity it also improved the quality as well as increase the predictability of the quality improved robustness of the process or product increased consistency of the out output and also reduce the direct labor cost and expenses because few labors are sufficient to run a big plant and reduce the time of processing and uh, safer working because many of the, uh, the processing involves uh, de dealing with the very sharp objectives so because of this automation the workers are completely away from this processing and the, the incidence of injury is very much reduced so these are the various steps involved uh, in the hygienic poultry processing primary processing starting from the birds receiving then unloading then putting into the sackle then uh, going for the uh, scalding then defeathering then after the evisceration and finally uh, the uh, decontamination then going for the uh, chilling then finally uh, packing and the dispatch so this is the various aspects of the poultry uh, primary processing so the automation the machineries have developed in all the aspect of this processing based upon the requirement of the, uh, the throughput the machineries are employed so even the automated evisceratorers are available where the throughput is high throughput is required so that can be done with the machinery itself the first and important part of the uh, poultry processing primary poultry processing is the uh, the, the, uh, the stunner so this is the making uh, the birds unconscious before slaughtering so here are uh, the birds uh, the size of the birds is uh, if the size of the birds are varying so we have to use the um, different voltage for the birds if otherwise if high voltage is given for a small size birds so there may be a, a, a heart stroke and the bird may die before uh, bleeding so that is not acceptable so uh, the machineries have come up uh, with the dynamic voltage uh, adjustment so they can be uh, very well replaced to stun the birds as per the Uh, bird weight and also uh, here there is a mechanism to prevent the pre stunning stop so then the other important aspect is the scalding because uh, where the deep, uh, the birds feathers were uh, loosened from the uh, birds uh, um, body so this is a uh, feather follicles were loosened and then the feathers will come out of that one so traditionally hot water scalding is used mainly the semi scalding that is a uh, between uh, 50 to 53 degrees centigrade for 1 to 3 minutes or around 56 degrees centigrade for 1 uh, or 2 minutes so here uh, now they have come up uh, because this is one of the phase where the cross contamination happens so uh, here so they have come up with the new uh, machineries where uh, instead of scalding water so they use the hot water spray so there uh, there this we avoids the cross contamination so this is a uh, a uh, recent development in this calling so this is here the water jet system is used for spraying over the carcass so all the important as birds uh, parts are covered in this uh, hot carcass hot water spray 
and the, even the steams also used for uh, for the scaling purpose so this avoids the cross contamination at the scaling point so we also tried this mechanism in uh, one one of the emu slaughtering farm located at the vijayawada so here we tried uh, tried the uh, hot water spray as well as the steam to uh, defeather the uh, emu birds so we have come up with the, successfully we have standardized the process then uh, the eviscerator completed dressing and the deboning operations starting from the vent cutting eviscerator neck removal feet removal even the skin removal can be done automatically and even the cut up parts like drumsticks uh, breast all those can be made uh, with the machines without any human involvement even uh, after once the eviscerator is done the visera pack is separated immediately from the product and transferred automatically to the dedicated sackle and a separate pack processing line so this avoids the cross contamination from the gi tract and uh, this uh, the machinery is also developed in such a way that this will not uh, give any damage to the intestine because once intestine is uh, cut open then there will be a lot of cross contamination so thus that lead to uh, improper uh, quality of the meat so this is uh, the line for used for evisceration so you can see some of the machinery is where the uh, cut up parts and deboning are done automatically so once the uh, evisceration is done uh, then uh, the other uh, important thing is the chilling so why we have to chill because uh, the microbes are uh, grow when the room uh, when the product is kept at room temperature so each microbes will multiply within 20 to 30 minutes into double so that the that will lead to this uh, spoilage of the product so immediately after evisceration the bird should the temperature of the bird should be brought down to 0 to 5 degrees centigrade so we, we, below anything below 5 degrees centigrade will interfere with the microbial uh, growth so that is the ideal temperature to keep the uh, chilled carcass so the uh, normally the la large animals they are using the air chilling but poultry normally they will be using it in the screw chiller or the immersion chilling so why we have to chill the meat there is another reason is so when uh, the birds got uh, slaughtered then they will undergo a process called rigor mortis if you if anybody consumes meat in the rigor mortis stage that will be tougher meat so uh, the immediately after slaughter the, the it is called muscle so then it has to undergo a process called rigor mortis and conditioning so when you keep the slaughtered bird at chilled condition 0 to 5 degree centigrade for about 4 to 6 hours then the muscle will be converted into meat so then only yeah, yeah, the, that meat will be more tastier and juicier so the muscle will not be that much uh, tastier and juicier when compared to the meat so yeah, an average of 4 to 6 hours of chilling is very essential to convert the muscle into meat so this is a immersion immersion chilling so either the iced wa ice water or chilled water is used for uh, the chilling of the birds so here uh, here also there are a lot of technologies involved in that one so the birds will be passing uh, moving from one direction whereas the uh, the inflow water will be passing in the other direction so that the counter flow will reduce the cross contamination among the birds so this is a very important point in the Uh, screw chilling or immersion chilling because the, this is one of the another second area where there will be a more cross contamination so to avoid cross contamination now some of the processor they are going for air chilling also so similar to the sheep uh, sheep and goat or uh, beef so this uh, they are go using the chilled air to uh, chill the uh, uh, chicken carcasses also but the problem with the air chilling when compared to the uh, screw chiller or immersion chiller or water chiller so here the air chilling lead to uh, a re reduction in the weight of the uh, weight of the carcass that is called chiller loss so about 2 percentage of the carcass weight will be reduced when you are subjecting the carcass into air chilling so to avoid the two one they have come up with a new model so that is called uh, the uh, immersion chill uh, the chilling air chilling along with the uh, spray of the water and an electrical stimulation so this is their they have patented technology wherein so they use the electrical stimulator once the carcass enter into the chiller room so they stimulate the carcass with the electrical current so that the rigor mortis will be quickly passed then they will rapidly reduce the carcass temperature uh, to uh, say to about 10 degrees centigrade 
because the rye rheumatis will be uh, happen at a quicker rate if above the 10 degree centigrade if once the temperature of the carcass brought down to below uh, 10 degree centigrade then the uh, time to rye rheumatism will be extended so what they are doing they are bringing down the temperature to below around 10 degree centigrade then they are uh, spraying the carcass with the chilled water so this uh, reduce the carcass drying and thereby uh, they are avoiding the chiller loss so the uh, this is the best mechanism to uh, and also the uh, because of the electrical stimulation they are reducing the time to rise rheumatis thereby the total duration of the chilling they are reducing so this is a, a, a one patented uh, process wherein uh, the the right time to rise rheumatis got reduced at the same time they are reducing the chiller loss and also the uh, the carcass will be uh, because of this carcass is sprayed with the chilled water so the the moisture loss is reduced thereby the the tenderness and juiciness of the uh, chicken uh, meat is maintained so this is one of the uh, recent, recent advancement in the carcass chilling and there is another thing uh, when compared to the super uh, chilling so there is another method called super chilling so here uh, the uh, the temperature of the carcass is uh, uh, brought down uh, uh, lowering the temperature of carcass to 1 to 2 degrees centigrade below the initial freezing point normally the freezing point of the meat is around minus 1.5 degrees centigrade so here the, in the super chilling the carcass temperature is maintained at either uh, uh, 0.5 or point, uh, minus 1 degree centigrade so within that temperature uh, the the uh, outer surface of the uh, carcass is got frozen but inner remains chill so this uh, along with the, the vacuum packaging so this has extended the shelf life of uh, chicken to more than few weeks so one or two weeks you can very easily keep the super chill and vacuum packed meat so many of the online uh, marketers they use this technology super chilling uh, and the vacuum packaging followed by super chilling so this extend the shelf life of the chicken product for more than 5 days to few weeks and the advantage of here is when uh, compared to the frozen the frozen uh, lead to uh, leaching of the uh, blood marrow uh, bone marrow into the uh, especially in the bones like drumsticks and thighs so the blackening of the leg is one of the problem so that can be avoided in the super chilling and also there are uh, there are many decontamination technologies have been developed using both chemicals as well as the natural preservatives because whatever the measures you have taken during the primary processing there will be a contamination so if there is a contamination then that will lead to shorter shelf life to avoid the drone so people are using different decontaminant immediately after chilling or before going or before going into the chiller so they use different chemicals like organic acid like acetic acid lactic acid the chlorine even hydrogen peroxides are used at the prescribed dose to reduce the surface contamination of the chicken carcasses even uh, some of the extract from the uh, plant extract like capsicum cinnamon oregano whole you uh, pomegranate peel grape seeds uh, extract thyme garlic there are many uh, plant based extracts that are available commercially so that can be used as a decontamination uh, agent to reduce the surface uh, microbial load of the carcass so then even the the ozone is also used now nowadays uh, because either it in the chilled water or it is a in the uh, chiller uh, room itself the ozone can be used to decontaminate the carcass and weighing grading and sorting so there are lot of met automatic mechanisms where uh, came so this automatically sort out the carcass based upon their weight so if you are able if you want to do it manually it takes lot of time and there will be error so this when the carcass after eviscation and the washing when it passes through the conveyor so this uh, automatically uh, sensed and based upon the body weight of the carcass so this carcass will be dropped to a particular uh, tub so the sorting and grading will be very easy and uh, this uh, the uh, sense image be, image assisted cutting and portioning so the especially the uh, when you are when, when you are going to sell the cut up parts so the consumers are very uh, very uh, uh, keen about the their shape how they look so they, they should not want they don't want any uh, deviation from the uh, normal cut so uh, this uh, image assisted cutting machines are available so that will uh, properly guide the knife to cut the uh, different cuts especially the value added valuable valuable cuts like breast and drumstick thighs so they doing a proper shape so that the customer will get the uh, assured quality of the product
and also this uh, machinery can be used to as a safety measures too so uh, the presence of the bones or even the minor uh, blood blood uh, clots so can be identified through the machines imaging technologies so this will identify whatever the uh, contaminant or the uh, deviations like blood uh, blood uh, clots or some injuries or cuts cuts all those can be easily detected in the online itself and those cuts which have any deviation or from the uh, expected uh, quality so that will be rejected and uh, that will not go into the uh, proper line, uh, main line so that can be uh, deviated and that will process separately so consumer every time will get the assured quality product so uh, these machineries also support in uh, assuring the quality of the product and as well as the safety of the product so this is a online mechanism where the, the camera will uh, continuously take the images of the product and if, if any uh, deviation from maybe a blood clot or a bone or even presence of the metal pieces will be detected and that will be get rejected from the main line so and the uh, near infrared based uh, spectrometry also can be used especially this will be these technologies are used in the validated product processing line so there you can even identify the nutritional profile of the uh, product especially in terms of fat and moisture content so any deviation in the uh, in the product specification so that will be identified and that will be informed to the processor so that that uh, the deviated deviated product will not enter into the main line similarly the uh, ftir technology that can be also used to uh, detect the presence of some of the microbes as well as the adulterant in the product line so that is also one of the important uh, tool can be employed to assure the quality of the safe, quality and safety of the whole the product and the main thing is the traceability so when uh, yeah, yeah, a mechanical line is uh, made and uh, the uh, the machines are uh, put into the use where the products are properly identified starting from the bird reception till it goes to the packaged material so this completely the traceability is able to maintain and all this data can be uh, converted into the report and uh, from that report you can able to identify what kind of what products are uh, packed and what is their uh, date of manufacturing where from they came all those traceability details can be easily incorporated into the line so this avoids lot of man manual work and also no confusion in the uh, product line so then come to the packaging so once the meat is harvested chilled then they, it will go to the packaging so the packaging the main function is to protect communicate and convenience and also uh, the uh, containment so containment is just holding the product and also protecting from the environment uh, and also it, it communicate to the consumer what kind of product is there when it was manufactured and how it to be uh, how, how it to be processed or how to be stored and how it to be processed all those uh, details will be communicated through the packaging material so nowadays in addition to that one uh, so the what actually once the uh, meat is packed into the product so they, there uh, there is a still there is a, a, a biology it's a, still the biological system is acting and the mecha, me metabolism of the fresh meat continues to use up the oxygen present in the red space and increase the carbon dioxide will be released so the carbon dioxide concentration will be go on increase inside the product so at the same time the water is produced and the humidity in the head space is increasing so this increases the growth of the spilet microorganism so this are to be taken into consideration while designing the proper packaging method so the vacuum packaging so it's a very normally employed to reduce because the fat oxidation is one of the major problem especially in the processed meat product because of the high fat content so presence of the little amount of oxygen encourages the oxidative rancidity so in the vacuum packaging method the uh, whatever the air inside available of the packaging is removed and uh, completely uh, eliminated the atmospheric oxygen is completely eliminated from the packaging material so uh, there is will not be any air for uh, stimulating the oxidative rancidity so this is a uh, is one of the very commonly employed uh, packaging system so now vacuum packaging with the super chilling is the commonly used tool for extending the shelf life of meat product then atmospheric package uh, modified atmospheric packaging so this has little value in the uh, poultry meat because the poultry meat is mostly white meat so uh, but the uh, map is more useful in the red meat like beef and uh, buffalo meat so where if you want to maintain the uh, oxygenated myoglobin so you, uh, people use a combination of 
uh, oxygen and nitrogen to uh, in, enhance the oxymyoglobin oxy content in the product so that uh, the appealing of the product will be good. Then in addition to uh, just to contain and communicate and uh, extend this, uh, the self life of the product. So this packaging material also is interacting with the consumer. So it, it tells what is the, what kind of material it contains and whether they are safe to eat. So the, they are, there are some of the freshness indicator stickers are placed in the, in the packaging material so that will communicate to the consumer that this product is still stable or it, has the, it is spoiled. So based upon the pH, so once the pH is of the meat exceeds six, so there will be an indicator. So that will tell the consumer that so this product is uh, in the insipient spoilage or it's spoiled. So similarly, uh, when we are going for the frozen meat, so uh, the, the, there is a power failure in this very common affair in the India, like developing countries. So uh, when the product undergoes uh, thawing, the refreezing, thawing, refreezing several cycles, then quality of the product get deteriorated. So to identify that one, there are also uh, indicator stickers are placed in the packaging material. So that will indicate that whether the package uh, the meat has undergone any thawing or refreezing cycle or it is totally maintained under the ideal conditions. So this is also one of the way we can communicate with the customer. Then uh, this ends the uh, primary processing. Now we are moving into the further processing or value addition. So here the whole carcass are cut up parts and deboned pieces may be further processed for making into a value added with product. This may include a farming, curing, smoking, or several cooking processes. The farming product requires change in the particle size so because the meat chunk uh, is uh, converted into a uh, minced meat so that uh, it, will, uh, it will help the processor to make it into a different shaped product. And also it helps the processor to incorporate various non-meat ingredient and other flavor, flavoring agents to get the desired flavor or color or shape of the product. The, 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 the common examples are sausages, nuggets, and uh, burger patties, all those things. So the, uh, the, what is it, why we have to go for the value-added product? So for the consumer, definitely it, is, it gives a variety. The first of all, uh, the, the variety is the major key in going for a value-added meat product. And also it reduces the preparation time. It's a very convenient for them. Yes, it may be a ready to cook product or ready to eat product. So if they're ready to cook product, just cut open the pack and go for the cooking. So there is no need to any preparation required for like cutting, trimming, all those things are not required. You just cut open the pack and go for making the product. Or the ready to eat product, still more convenient. There is no need of any preparatory method just to warm it as per the instruction available in the packaging material, then, then you can enjoy the product. So this is a, from the consumer point of view, it gives a variety and convenience. From the, uh, from the processor point, so it, uh, it uh, gives the opportunity for him to develop various value added product. So uh, because uh, in, instead of taking a monotonous product every time, so he gives the offers the variety of the product. So by incorporating various ingredient and subjecting the meat to various kind of processing steps, cooking steps, so that he will get a variety of product. So that will increase his marketability finally. And because of uh, this facilitate incorporation of the non-meat ingredient, because uh, meat is the costiest part. So when he replaces with some non-meat ingredient like binders, uh, emulsifiers, or some extenders, or coloring agents, all those things. So that will increase the palatability of the product at the same time, reduce the cost of the product so that he, he gets a good margin from selling the product. And, uh, and from the farmer point of view, it gives you assured uh, return because when there is a processing, the, the uptake of the product from the farm is continuous process so that every time he, he gets the demand for his produce, the farmer gets regular intake of his product so that the farmer income is assured. So it, in the, for a country, it, is a, it gives a more employment and also generate economy, economy to the country also. So from the processor point of view, from the farmer point of view, from the even the consumer point of view, even from the country point of view, value addition is very important. 
so the uh, the first uh, quick service restaurant the very famous mcdonalds they came into india in the 1996 so currently there are more than 150 brands which are uh, running the quick service restaurants so this this uh, restaurants they run uh, they use the value added prepared value added product so just uh, before uh, when consumer orders so just to make some preliminary preparation and survey so this takes very less time at the same time it is a good opportunity for selling the very very value added value added meat product the consumer uh, the pattern of consumption pattern has changed over the period of time because of the uh, affluence in their living standards and their exposure so the indian consumers now uh, more than 50% of the indian population eats out at, at least once in every 3 months and eight times in every <coughs> months in metros so this gives a very great opportunity for the <coughs> sorry So this segment is growing at a more than twenty uh, percentage on an annual growth rate is there. So there are several uh, MNCs, even the national companies who have come up in the food service restaurant model. The famous are McDonald's, KFC, Subway, <coughs> Burger Kings, and many many are have come up. And even a lot of Indian companies like Wendy's Express is also have come up. so these are some of the list of uh, companies who, who we are uh, having the quick service restaurant models so the godrej and uh, alkabir alana uh, some of the uh, uh, national companies are there in this business and even the some of the government agencies like uh, state government livestock department like haringatta meat in the west bengal meat products of india from kerala and even the recently the uttarakhand they have come up with the brand name of bakra So selling the uh, goat based meat product. So there are several uh, uh, state government agencies and central government agencies are coming up with uh, different initiative to promote the value added meat processing in this country. So in addition to that one, uh, the, some of the uh, uh, custom manufacturers also have come up like uh, this uh, <coughs> Vista Foods and uh, Jubilant Foods. So these are the companies. so they they never uh, market the product into the best uh, customer but they are the manufacturers so they man the uh, mcdonalds or the domino pizza so they never uh, they had to, they don't have any of their manufacturing unit so they uh, custom make uh, they outsource the product from some of the uh, custom makers like uh, uh, the vista foods so they give the specification to these uh, manufacturers so then this manufacturer manufacture but the particular product as per the requirement of the customer and they deliver them so this is another uh, the opportunity available for the meat processor to get into the value added meat processing sector so the recently last few years there is a, a the huge change in the retailing of the meat the the, uh, the normal regular retail shops were uh, no more uh, uh, sought after by the customers so they have now moved to the online e-commerce marketers so thanks to uh, companies like startups like lisius fresh to home uh, even the tender cuts and big baskets so they have come up with a very nice model so they have delivering the uh, hygienically processed chilled meat at the customer doorstep so they have changed the, the way the meat is traded in this country the demand for fresh meat and the lack of quality options in the traditional seller centric market largely drive the online uh, meat selling market in india so recently the uh, <coughs> the lisius has become one of the unicorn so there is more than uh, 10000 uh, crores business so they have also got lot of funding from that one similarly uh, the farm to fork model of the fipola they also got lot of funding and uh, there are lot of take over among the uh, startups so this all good signs for the value added meat processing in this country so uh, the value added product can be grouped into major two categories uh, leaving the fresh meat so uh, the uh, the semi process and that is called ready to cook and the process completely process that is ready to eat product so the uh, semi process like marinated or emulsion products they are they need a little bit uh, cooking process before consumption the completely processed or ready to eat product so they are already prepared just you have to warm the product before uh, eating 
so the marination this is a very uh, upcoming market the season ready to cook uh, products are growing so uh, the normal marination it takes a lot of time so the machineries have come up uh, like a vacuum marinator or vacuum tumbler so uh, this uh, after marination the products are dropped into the vacuum chambers so this vacuum will be created then that will enhance the uh, curing of the process because the marinate what you are using the spice mix and other things they have to penetrate into the core of the product then only the product will be palatable so normally uh, the vacuum tumbler uh, normally the marination process takes minimum of 6 hours to even the 12 hours or 24 hours but this uh, using the vacuum tumbler so that will reduce the uh, the duration of the marination into few minutes more than let like, maybe an half an hour within half an hour your marination is ready so that can go for cooking so this reduce the uh, the time to process so this is a very great advantage and also it increase the uptake of the marinade so that will enhance the yield of the product so that is a very good advantage for the processor because the uptake of the marinade will be very high when you are using the vacuum tumblers then the processed meat product we can categorize into several uh, category like emulsion based meat product restructured meat product enrobed meat product like KFC fried chicken then smoked meat product dried and self stable meat product like uh, retard processed meat product or pickle or dried meat and the traditional meat product like kebabs uh, sausage kebabs halim all those things are coming out of the traditional meat product so the uh, value addition process are making the product a value added product normally involves the uh, mincing so we have to uh, convert the uh, whole meat into a uh, minced meat so because that will uh, help uh, us to add whatever the ingredient we want so it may be a spice mix or condiments or a binder or even the uh, some of the coloring agents all this ingredient can be added into the minced meat then that can be processed in and into a different shapes so this uh, various pre mixes and the spices are available so this will give a variety of products in, uh, by adding a, a particular uh, proportion of the spice mix you can develop a various varieties like some uh, like pepper sausages or garlic sausages or onion based sausages or even you can include some of the uh, spices which are health promoting so based upon the customer requirement you can add this ingredients and spice mix and you can make a very value added meat product and even uh, the in the case of uh, enrobed meat product lot uh, different kinds of batters and breading mixes are uses that will give a variety of experience eating experience to the consumers so this is a process where the uh, meat is first minced then that will be placed into a bowl chopper so uh, bowl chopper is there in that one uh, we will be adding all the non meat ingredients it includes binders spice mix salt sugar uh, even nitrate whatever the additives and ingredients you have you want to add it into your product to give a variety to the customers you can add it in that one and that will be molded into different shapes and different kind of cooking you can go for a deep fat frying or you can go for a steaming or even go for the dry heating based upon the type of cooking met cooking method also you will give a different taste to your product so then the restructured meat product so when compared to the emulsion meat product where the uh, total uh, meat is completely minced and made into a fine texture in the restructured meat product you can find these small chunks of the meat itself so here you will get a more biting experience when uh, the indian consumer wants the meat should be uh, eaten with the, after chewing so uh, that kind of customer those who want to chew their product so this uh, restructured meat will be a good one then enrobed the very famous uh, fried uh, wings fried chicken so here uh, the the meat is uh, first we have cured in uh, salt and polyphosphate solution then pre cooked after pre cooking we have to coat them with the uh, batter then after that one it will be covered with the breading mix so and then it will be fried because of the frying that will gives a crispy texture to the uh, while eating so that will be a good eating experience for the customer so kids are very fans fond of this like fried product so even the carcass frames when you are going for further processing and making a lot of boneless meat so the carcass is left over that that carcass can be very well utilized uh, maybe for a small scale processing so that can be harvested uh, and they can make a, a traditional meat product like samosas uh, or even the uh, chicken rolls or cutlets 
even the pickles and even soups all those several products can be made from utilizing the undervalued uh, or unval uh, under utilized carcass frames then curing the cured and smoked products are very famous especially the uh, among the pork items like ham bacon so but that can be also utilized for developing cured and smoked meat product so there are several techniques maybe a dry curing or a wet curing uh, can be employed to develop the uh, cured meat product so the, in the dry curing uh, they will be applying the salt over the uh, cuts and that will be uh, kept it in the chiller for the maturation once the curing is done that product will be taken out and that will be subjected to smoking so we have developed some of the value added chicken cured in smoked meat product from the uh, leg as well as the breast even we have utilized the uh, under utilized cuts like uh, neck so we call them as a curd chicken so in this one we have developed a curd smoked and uh, smoked chicken uh, with a good palatability then the retard processing this is the uh, where uh, the product is made self stable because of after uh, here there are laminates of the packaging materials are used so once the product is stuffed into the laminated packaging material then it will be subjected to high temperature processing in the retard at 121 degree centigrade maybe for 20 to uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes to get a f0 value of 5 or more so under this one the it will lead to complete uh, sterility of the product the, there will not be any microorganism so that the product is self stable at room temperature this will be a very good uh, boon for the bachelors who don't have opportunity to cook and uh, uh, cooking facility or even those who lives in the remote area like army people uh, where they don't have facility for cooking so this retard process products are ready to eat product and uh, at the same time they are self stable at room temperature So that can be just cut open if you want to have if you have facility to warm it up you can warm it otherwise you can directly consume this product so they are self stable and uh, no need of any refrigeration so there are a lot of product available commercially available in the market uh, made by the ITC and several companies then uh, the automation also helps in the further processing industry so here uh, because of the sensor also available and uh, the total processing is under controlled condition so the automation help to get the right temperature of the cooking and processing and precisely the right fat content because the when we are using the raw, raw material of the that chicken from various carcasses there will be a change in the composition the nutritional composition of the raw material so because the online process, online sensors are available in the processing line so this online sensor will uh, detect will detect the uh, any deviation in the fat content level then that will help the processor to avoid those material and they can get the consistent quality and nutritionally uh, nutritional quality of the product and uh, the final product because the uh, lot of sensors are used used in the further processing so the the final process, process is the product will have a consistent quality and also automation helps to the processor to produce the product at a very uh, lower cost so the here uh, the ideal mix of different equipments used and also along with the softwares so like the in feed conveyor high end vacuum mixing and grinding machines emulsifiers and forming or molding machines uh, and also the uh, fat scanner so that will help to uh, have the consistent uh, fat level in the finished product so this are uh, and a lot of uh, the infrared based uh, sensors also put into use based within the, the with this combination of the different machineries along with the, softwares the uh, the processor have uh, consistent able to produce the product with consistent quality so this is the automated line uh, so the uh, raw material meat is uh, just loaded into the um, uh, mincer so that will mince then the, from the mincer meat automatically go into the grinder where the other non meat ingredients are added then the final uh, mix will be ready then that will be molded automatically of a desired shape with as per the requirement of the customer maybe a patty or a sausage whatever the mold you are giving accordingly the product will be made and that will be also uh, used uh, cooked by a flash uh, heater where the final product will be prepared cooked and it will come out and finally it will go for process uh, packaging so this is a complete automated line when there is a throughput is very high so processor can go for the automated line for producing well added meat product so this is the, uh, the spiral process used for individually quick process when high end value added products are made so they need to be uh, they need to be uh, 
quickly frozen so that to they, their final quality will be maintained. So the individually quick frozen, uh, uh, the freeze spiral freezers are used for making individually quick frozen product like patties or nuggets, all those things can be frozen using this machines. Then we come to the uh, functional meat product. So because the it is a uh, the product which is an, which is uh, expected to deliver not only the uh, nutritional health benefit to the consumer but beyond the nutrition. So it also impart the uh, health some health, health benefit to the consumers. So there are several uh, strategies we can use it. Addition of natural extract with the antioxidant and antimicrobial property that enhance the shelf life of the product. And we can add prebiotic or probiotic into the uh, product. So thereby it impart the health benefit to the consumer. Uh, because the one of the important uh, nutrient which is lacking in the meat is the uh, fiber. So that can be added into the final product so that the customer will get fiber also. Then incorporating the uh, vegetable protein like soya uh, protein isolates, wood fibers, carrageenan as a fat replacer. See, somebody want to have a low fat product so that can be incorporated and that will be uh, good for those people which don't want to eat a product which is high in fat content. And also the uh, organic and inorganic substances like vitamins and minerals can be added into the final product thereby enhancing the nutritive value of the product. So there are, uh, though this is a pre-harvest mechanism because I have covered only the post-harvesting aspect, but uh, the, the healthy meat or functional meat can be prepared uh, through the uh, feeding uh, uh, into the, into, to the birds. So you can incorporate uh, like uh, uh, several minerals like uh, selenium or vitamin C, vitamin E like vitamin E or fatty acids like DHA, omega-3 fatty acids, all those can be incorporated into the feed so that, that uh, the nutrient will be deposited into the meat or as well as the uh, egg so that the final customer will be getting the health benefit. So there are in the market is uh, having a lot of uh, the fortified uh, product with a lot of uh, fatty acid like DHA, you the vitamin E and uh, other uh, omega-3 fatty acids which uh, eggs as well as the chickens are available. So uh, this is what uh, then in addition to that one, some of the uh, plant extract can also be incorporated into the uh, chicken feed. Uh, thereby we can enhance the nutritive value as well as the health promoting benefits of the chicken and egg. And in the post harvestation, so after uh, uh, when you are um, after the uh, partition, when you are making the minced meat, then you can along with the other ingredient like binders and uh, spice mix, you can add this like ingredient, maybe a yeah, vitamin uh, or maybe a, a mineral complex or maybe some health promoting uh, plant extract that, that those can be added. So that can enhance the uh, shelf life as well as impart good health to the consumers. And even uh, some fat replaces like oats, wheat bran can be added in the place of vegetable oil or animal fat. So that will uh, lead to a product with low fat content. Any product which has less than 10% of the fat is called a low fat uh, product. So this can be uh, produced by replacing the vegetable fat or uh, animal fat with the uh, some of the ingredient like oat or wheat bran, like Indian ingredient that can uh, uh, that without affecting the sensory attributes, the product can be prepared. So these are some of the product uh, incorporated with some of the health promoting uh, spice mix and uh, herbs. They are available in the market. So even uh, the vegetables were incorporated as a source of uh, fiber into uh, fiber as well as antioxidants. They are all available in the market. And uh, the high-end technologies, in addition to the packaging uh, material with the uh, interactive packaging material, like uh, which indicates the shelf life of the product. So the high-end uh, technologies like uh, Internet of Things or artificial intelligence. So is very much used by the online marketer during the transit of the product from the storehouse to the consumer. So the, the, the container which transport the uh, final product. So is having uh, the sensor, sensors are in, uh, in, in, uh, incorporated into the uh, packaging material as well as the vehicle itself. So that will be continuously monitored from the, uh, from the processor end. If any deviation, if the temperature uh, goes above the specific level like uh, 7 degree centigrade or 5 degree centigrade that will be immediately 
inform to the processor so that uh, he will be informed to the truck uh, truck driver and uh, necessary precautions will be taken to restore uh, the situation so this will be completely uh, end to end uh, backup is there so that the, the final product never uh, get exposed to adverse temperature so that the safety of the product will not be compromised so this iron technologies are used for this purpose and uh, several technologies like they are called as disruptive technologies recently came up so this includes uh, the, the 3d uh, first of all the uh, cell cultured meat i will be dealing later on after next slide then the 3d printing so here the 3d printing uh, it is a mimicking like uh, uh, yeah, yeah, bakery where uh, the whatever the ingredient you want, you can be uh, made and that will be printed into different layer. Whatever the shape you want, whatever the color you want, that product will be delivered. So this is a 3D printing. This is an upcoming technology, and uh, it will be uh, uh, it will be the future of the uh, future product. And uh, the personalized nutrition based upon the individual customer need, maybe a low fat product or a low salt product. Whatever the particular customer is, somebody may be allergic to a particular uh, food product. So that can be easily uh, addressed through the personalized nutrition where the product is made as per the requirement of the customer. And the lot of uh, safety aspects also, the food safety aspect also, lot of lateral flow uh, technology has been come up so that he can easily uh, identify the presence of uh, various microorganisms as well as the uh, contaminants like antibiotic and pesticides in the final product so that will help the customer to customer as well as the processor to uh, check their product whether they are safe to consume or not and a lot of internet things uh, come internet based things have come up to uh, for the traceability measures so we are uh, in nrc meet also we have uh, encouraged our own entrepreneur uh, he has developed a uh, uh, algorithm based uh, uh, model where by using the, the uh, mobile unit to uh, identify the cattle based upon the muscle. So because of based upon the muscle, uh, he can able to identify the animals with uh, uh, like it's like a fingerprinting of a human. So based upon the muscle printing, so he can able to identify the animals. So a lot of, a lot of things are coming up in this one. Uh, so this will going to change the way the food industry is handled currently. So the upcoming another thing is the cultured or lab grown meat and also plant based alternatives. So a lot of startups are coming up. Uh, so there are fundings also flowing into those startups. So uh, whether, but the question is whether they are going to be economically viable and also environmental friendly. So that is a big uh, question because the, uh, the uh, to make the plant based meat alternatives, so they have to uh, mimic the texture of the meat. So it's very difficult to mimic the texture of the meat to get the uh, texture of the meat. So they are going for a very advanced high level processing like uh, spinning and all. So this uh, also uh, lead to a lot of uh, complication in the nutritional aspect, the nutritional bioavailability may be changed. Uh, even some complication in the cross contamination may happen during the processing. Uh, so these are the big questions, even the cultured meat. So uh, even NRC meat is having a project on this one. So we are uh, trying to develop the cultured meat uh, grown into the laboratory. So the economic aspect, economic viability, and how it is going to be an alternate for the existing meat sector uh, that will be also uh, in the coming years will tell about its viability and also sustainability. So to conclude my lecture, the consumer preference for meat and poultry products will likely to continue. So there is a, uh, because seven, more than 70 percent of the Indians are meat eaters. So there will be a huge demand and that demand will be continuing even uh, the, because of the increasing life, uh, <clears throat> life standard, living standards and their exposure and their uh, awareness about the nutritional department in importance there, the, the shift towards the livestock products is, is, is happening and definitely that will encourage the uh, livestock and farm poultry processor producers to grow more animals. But the, the thing is, the newer technology, what we are using in the primary processing as well as the secondary processing, so they have been evolved to help the, to develop the novel value-added meat products with little or no chemical preservatives because consumers are very conscious. They don't want any chemical residues present in their product. And uh, they want to retain the original uh, sensory attributes as well as the uh, 
uh, food value of the product. They don't want to compromise on this one. So this newer technology definitely will fulfill the consumer requirement as well as it will help the processor to come up with variety of value added product which will increase its marketability. So ultimately, our main aim is we have to have a healthy food and ultimately the healthy nation. Thank you. So before concluding, I briefly tell about the incubation activity at NRC Meet. So our agribusiness incubator was developed, uh, was established in the year 2016. So we have a good amount of infrastructure starting from the primary processing like experimental laboratory for sheep and goat. And also recently, last year, we have established the poultry processing plant with the capacity of 200 birds per hour. And also we have state of art uh, further processing validated meat product section. And we regularly import training on uh, primary processing as well as secondary processing of the meat and poultry. And we also giving the technology for development of uh, hygienic wholesome meat production as well as the value-added meat product processing. So we are supporting the entrepreneur to establish their own unit. And uh, these are some of the customers which uh, with their product and their facility. So we also support the customer to establish their own slaughterhouse to produce wholesome meat. So I thank this opportunity for uh, passion listening and also for the organizer for this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, Amit Kumar, for a nice presentation. Anybody has doubts, please kindly ask. He has presented very well about uh, recent uh, trends in uh, meat processing and value addition. Thanks. Any doubt from anybody? From Bonesha Center? Anybody? Participants? Hello. What are I am Dr. Padi from Bhuvanesh, sir. Tell me, Padi. What processing or cold processing? Kya hota hai? Hot processing and cold processing. Sir, hot processing is the uh, hot meat that's immediately after slaughtering. Then, uh, making the, uh, that is fabricating the meat. That is called hot processing. Hot bone, hot boning or hot processing. So you have to scalding it or not? You will not scald it. No, it is not scalding. It is not related to scalding, sir. It is actually uh, cutting the meat after evisceration is done. Because uh, Dr. Muthukumar, in some uh, registration of uh, that uh, nine major, they are asking for hot processing and then cold processing. That means that uh, carcass something. So is there any things like that? I don't think. That, that's what, sir. Uh, normally, the inter traditionally India, what we follow is hot processed meat or hot meat. Mm -hmm. We never chill the carcass. Achha. So, is, yes. there, is there any difference in value? Yeah, actually, sir, uh, the, if you are eating the immediately after slaughtering, that is called only muscle. Mm -hmm. So, muscle has to convert it into meat. So, that will happen when you chill the carcass. It's like uh, something like the raw, raw mango or raw banana. So it needs to be ripened before eating. So here, uh, mm -hmm. when you have, you have to keep the meat after after dressing is dressing is done. So the carcass should be kept in the chiller for adequate period. Maybe it depends upon the type of species. Like yeah. chicken, yeah. the uh, rigor mortis starts around half an hour to one hour, and it will complete in four hours to six hours. Oh, that is okay. That is okay. Actually, some value they ask. That is that you have certain percentage. Then uh, in hot and cold, how it will be difference? Then a uh, little confused. That's why I ask. In no, that's what taste. See, that's what the meat will be more juicier, flavorful. That is okay. That is okay. That is the uh, come uh, to some uh, that is characteristics of this little thing. Yeah. I am asking that eviscerated yield and other things they are asking hot, cold. Is there any difference? Hot processing, cold processing, eviscerated yield weight, a percentage, then that is also again that is different. So that is, I don't think any thing can be done. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. But uh, anyway, you have to see. Okay. Can we do? Anybody doubts of, about this fluid crossing and well addition? If there are no doubts, we will close it. Okay, Muchukar, thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Very, very good presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Very good presentation. Thank you, sir. You have presented 88 slides. Yeah, right. Uh, very good, very good. Lengthy, lengthy presentation. Thank you, sir. And you have covered every aspect of the meat process. Yeah, yeah. yeah.